So let's start on that point about the scope. You know, someone, I, I, someone said something the other day. They said, it's like when you shake the tree, all these crimes fall out. Like, why would you, why would you stop shaking the tree and, and keep the inquiry limited to the scope of the Ukraine affair? Well, it is very important to shake the tree. I think that's what we're doing. What we've seen, basically, is that the Trump administration has been characterized by five things. Chaos, crisis, confusion, corruption, and criminal activity. And we are going to... You didn't just do that on the spot. I did. No, you didn't. We're going to follow the facts, apply the law, uh, be guided by the United States Constitution, uh, and uncover and present the truth to the American people. But that's not responsive to the question. Because well, the, the question is, yeah. right now, there is an inquiry whose scope, as I understand it, being conducted by Chair Adam Schiff as part of the oversight committees, pursuant to the impeachment inquiry, yeah. covers the Ukraine matter and only the Ukraine matter. Am I misunderstanding that? Well, actually, to clarify uh, and to modify that, yeah. the focus will remain on the Trump-Ukraine scandal uh, as we know it, because there's evidence of wrongdoing that's hiding in plain sight. And what you have is that the president uh, pressured a foreign leader to target an American citizen uh, for political gain and then withheld at the same time $391 million in aid uh, to a very vulnerable country that had been authorized on a bipartisan basis. That is textbook abuse of power, right. undermines our national security, and the president betrayed his oath of office. And so... The Intel Committee, led by Adam Schiff, who's doing a phenomenal job, will continue to unwind that thread. But Speaker Pelosi has also said that we are operating under an impeachment inquiry umbrella. So there are a total of six committees looking at the wrongdoing that has continued to come out of 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. The Foreign Affairs Committee is involved. The Oversight Committee is involved. The Ways and Means Committee is involved. The Financial Services Committee is involved, and of course, the Judiciary Committee is involved as well. There's also one other aspect of this which per, uh, pertains to Rudy Giuliani, which is there now a criminal investigation out of the Southern District of New York in which two of Rudy Giuliani's associates, men who are represented by their own lawyer as being part of President Trump's legal team, have been indicted in federal court. That's another variable in this. That's a variable, uh, but it's part of the same narrative in terms of the wrongdoing that has been unleashed on the country by President Trump. Now, Rudolph Giuliani, you know, what a guy. I mean, failed mayor, <laughs> failed presidential candidate, failed lawyer on his way to being a convicted felon. Do you, do you think that, do you, do you really mean that? I think so. You, you think, you think, I mean, in all seriousness, you think he has criminal exposure right Absolutely, now? Absolutely, for the reasons that you laid out yeah. in terms of the possibility that he was illegally lobbying on behalf of the Turkish government. But here's the key. The rough transcript of the July 25th phone call makes clear that Rudolph Giuliani, certainly in the context of the Ukraine scandal, was operating at the explicit direction of Donald Trump, who made it clear to the Ukrainian president that he was to follow up with his personal lawyer, who's not a diplomat. He's not a member of the State Department, the diplomatic corps or an ambassador. He was a political thug operating on behalf of Donald Trump to solicit foreign interference in the 2020 election. That's outrageous. Um, uh, yesterday, Mick Mulvaney uh, came out and in, uh, <laughs> I admitted it. Uh, and I think he, uh, in his defense, I think he got confused because they alternate between we didn't do it and we did it, it's fine. <laughs> And he forgot which day it was in terms of the messaging. But I saw Jim Jordan say, well, it doesn't change anything for me. I mean, do, do you feel like your Republican colleagues on the House side, and I saw Congressman Rooney now, a Republican, saying he is open to an impeachment inquiry. Is there any set of facts or is it just there is no set of facts that would sway them? Well, there are some members on the Republican side who are part of what I refer to as the cover up caucus. And they are simply <laughs> right. It's unfortunate. They're not interested in upholding their oath of office. They're interested in covering up uh, wrongdoing by Donald Trump. Hopefully there are others uh, who take seriously the fact that we are in Congress uh, not to put party first, but to put country first. And that's what we should. How do you. 
I've seen a lot of reporting on the timeline here, and there was a lot of reporting about aides and people in leadership like yourself thinking to move quickly and strike while the iron is hot because the facts are quite damning and they're out in front of the public and you have polls showing that as many as 55, 54 percent favor impeachment itself. Um, how do you how do you think about the timeline and how do you balance that with what we talked about earlier about getting to the bottom of things? Well, what the speaker has said is that we're going to proceed expeditiously, uh, which I interpret uh, as potentially something is done prior to the end of the year as it relates to the recommendations that the six committees led by the Intel Committee will make to the Judiciary Committee as it relates to potential articles of impeachment. Now, one thing about the Mulvaney uh, reveal, that was a straight up confession yes. of <laughs> what took place. That, that is the correct word. <laughs> Appreciate your affirmation. <laughs> But, you know, listen, we're, we're going to undertake a serious and solemn investigation uh, as it relates to unraveling what has occurred and presenting the truth to the American people. Um, I wanted to uh, offer, offer my condolences for the loss of your uh, remarkable colleague, Elijah Cummings, who, who passed away yesterday. He obviously was, has had an incredible career long before Donald Trump uh, ever ran for office, but has also been crucial as part of the Oversight Committee. Um, how are you and your colleagues dealing with that loss? Well, it was a very tough day on the Hill. Uh, he was an incredible statesman, an incredible man, uh, an incredible public servant. And he would consistently encourage us uh, to defend our democracy, stand up for the Constitution, make sure that we present the truth to the American people, uh, consistent with our solemn obligations as members of the House of Representatives, the People's House. He inspired us uh, with his wisdom and with his work ethic and with his integrity and stature in life, his legacy will continue to inspire us to finish the job that he was such an important part of starting. All right. Congressman, Congressman Hakeem Jeffries, Thank, you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.